Okay, so the first step to take when you're creating a rig for a character is you want to make sure that your mesh is all one object to start with. So if it's got armor, if it's got swords or different props hanging off of it, you just want to make sure that they're all connected to the one main mesh. Uh, what you want to do then is just go into your systems button and under that you'll find a biped. Go into your front view and from the base click and drag your biped out so that it's approximately the same height as your mesh. Uh, you want to do that so that the proportions are reasonably accurate in comparison to the mesh and that's just going to save you a bit of time in the long run. Go into your motions tab and you'll see a little button there with a man on it. Uh, click that and it will take you into figure mode. What that allows us to do is manipulate this skeleton here now so that we can move it into the correct positions of our mesh here. So make sure on your selection filter you change that to bones so that we don't accidentally select the mesh while we're working. And I'm just going to move my biped into position. Now in order to move this biped the whole biped vertically or horizontally just make sure you use these keys over here in the track selection and of course you've got options there to rotate the body as well if need be so it's going to move the pelvis into position now the thing you want to focus on to begin with is the pelvis area okay because everything builds off from the pelvis so if that's not accurate and you have to go back and change it, that means you're going to have to go back and change everything else. So it's best to make sure that this is correct right off the bat. Uh, so over in your reference coordinate system, just change that to local because if it's set to view or something like that, you'll notice that it won't actually scale along the cur um, You'll notice that it won't actually scale along the correct axis, uh, which can be just a real pain and confusing so make sure it's set to local and you'll have a much easier time scaling these into position. Make sure that you check the side of your biped as well when doing this stuff. So I'm just gonna move his pelvis into place. Making sure that areas like the hip bones and the elbows match up correctly with the mesh itself so that when we're moving the skeleton around, say we're bending the knee of the skeleton, it's actually bending in the correct place on our mesh when animating. So, kind of move his leg and scale that into position. Uh, just work on this as fast as possible, get it out of the way. Uh, it can be a lengthy time consuming process but it's just something that's necessary. Uh, you want to make sure that at the same time you're speeding through it, you're doing it accurately uh, otherwise you're going to have to go back and redo things and it's just not worth the time to actually take and have to go back over things so make sure that it's correct from the start. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time move the spine into place. Sometimes it's easy to forget to do that. Now the other thing to keep in mind is a lot of these bones, they don't actually have to be 100% filling the model out. So I don't actually have to go in and you know, stretch these ribs out to the side so that they're matching perfectly. It's just getting them reasonably accurate in terms of height and positioning. Uh, it's really more about the joints than anything. In fact, a lot of the time it's better to just focus on that rather than uh, you know, trying to actually bulk these areas of the bone out because you might run into trouble with your skinning when you move on to that. 
I'm just rotating up the arms, moving them into the same pose that I, my mesh is in. that I'm only focusing on one side of the model at the moment, uh, the green side of the biped, and that's because I can simply, once I finish editing, I can just simply mirror over whatever I've done on this side over to the opposite side. It's very simple, and we'll go through that once I've finished making these edits. Uh, the hand's probably the, the hardest complex part, well, not even, mostly it's just the most time-consuming part. If you've got your reference coordinate system set to local here, it's especially handy for fingers because they can be quite fiddly otherwise if you've got it set to view or something. is the mesh. Basically want to make your new, your new skeleton abide to the same proportions and the same positions as what your mesh is. Okay, it's very important. Occasionally, if you hit F3, you can always check to see if the bones are positioned correctly, if the, the wireframe view is a bit too confusing for you. And of course, this isn't the only way to actually do this. Uh, this is just my way of doing it. There's heaps of tutorials out there that show different techniques. Some are even, there's even plugins which automatically do this stuff for you. Personally, I like to avoid them. But again, it's just, it's all up to the way that you work and what you find most productive. I'm a bit old school. I like the old school way of doing things simply because every program and application is different. Sometimes you're going to be using different softwares that just don't have the same plugins that you maybe have become accustomed to. And then if you don't know how to do this stuff manually, you get kind of stuck. But of course, some of the unwrapping plugins out there that are now built into the software, which is really cool. I think it's, it's important to know the foundations and the theory behind all of this stuff anyway, just that you know what's going on. Because knowledge is power. Uh, it allows you to figure out problems when you come across them a lot more easier and in a shorter amount of time. But I guess there's always Google as well, which use very frequently when I run into problems. Okay. So one more finger to go and then we'll mirror across our bones. The mesh's bones. I don't know why 
why that changed back to world. Okay, so now that we've got his bones posed and scaled into position, oops, forgot about our head here. So, now what we'll do is just select all the green bones, and these are the bones that we're going to copy across. So, in the motion panel, underneath copy and paste, you'll notice that we can, well first thing to do is create a new collection, okay, um, that's the first step you need to take, especially if you don't have one, uh, haven't actually already made a collection. So once you've done that, just go down into copy posture and that will copy the bones that we selected before. Once you've done that, you'll see that if you scroll across from the copy button, there's paste posture, which will paste the default posture that we have there, and then copy uh, paste posture opposite and that's the one we want to click because we want to paste the opposite posture. You'll see that as soon as we click that button it clicks right into place and that is our rig pretty much set up.